Russian Foreign Minister says that the majority of the world countries have recognized there is no substitute to the political solution to the crisis in Syria. Units of the Syrian Armed Forces carried out operations against terrorist dens in several provinces, killing and injuring scores of them. And Minister of Information, Omran Zabi, says that the battle waged by Syria against terrorists isn't just its own battle, rather it is the battle of the entire civilized world against terrorism and agrarian mentality. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. Units of the Syrian Arab Armed Forces carried out operations against terrorist dens and gatherings in several provinces, killing and injuring scores of terrorists, some of them affiliated to Al-Nusra Front, Shabhat al-Nusra. More details in the following. An army unit targeted an armed terrorist group to the east of the sewage establishment and near Al-Uthman Mosque in Adra area in the countryside killing and injuring scores of them. An army unit ambushed an armed terrorist group affiliated to the so-called Islamic State in Iraq and Asham and killed all of its members were attempting to sneak into Akraba town in the Damascus countryside. A source said that an army unit killed all members of an armed terrorist group in Duma city in the countryside. In Asaki farms, security forces seized an ammunition store used by the armed terrorist groups in their attacks against the Syrian Arab army and Syrian citizens. The seized weapons included RPG launchers, machine guns, missiles and snipers in addition to explosive devices, dynamic bars and communication devices. Books including takfiri fatwas were also found. In Homs, army units killed all members of an armed terrorist group while they were attempting to sneak from al qarabis neighborhood into Alwar farms. Another army unit killed scores of terrorists who were attempting to infiltrate from Al-Husn town into Talkalakh and destroy their weapons and ammunition. In Al-Hasaka countryside, an army unit attacked a terrorist hideout, killing all terrorists inside and confiscating various kinds of weapons. And in the Damaros Hotel in Damascus, and on a lighter note, a ceremony was held during which the Christmas tree was lit and prayers were held asking for the return of peace to Syria. The participants affirm that the event, which was jointly organized by the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Social Affairs, aimed at praying for Syria, its people and children. They added that the event emphasized Syrian people's strong belief in their homeland. Moving to Aleppo, where Saryon Band, affiliated to the Arab Anglican Church, held a Christmas hymns evening, which expressed the supply meanings of Christmas and prayed for restoring peace and security to Syria. In Damascus, in appreciation of the great sacrifices offered by the Syrian Arab army in confronting the terrorism exported to Syria by the Saudi Qatari Turkish regimes, a group of Syrian youth honored a number of Syrian army soldiers, extending deep thanks for their crucial role in preserving the security and stability of the homeland and protecting the Syrian people. Mr. Omran Zobi said that the battle waged by Syria against terrorists isn't just its own battle. Rather, it is the battle of the entire civilized world against terrorism and takfiri mentality. 
meeting an Australian delegation comprising activists from the hands of Syria movement and academic media and political figures. As Zawi said that, the war against Syria is unprecedented in modern history. As never before, people from so many countries come to fight under the banner of terrorism. He pointed out that terrorists from 83 countries, including Australians, are involved in the war on Syria, with one of the Australian terrorists being responsible for abducting 106 people from Latakia countryside, adding that the Australian government is aware of this and sits idly while this terrorist is currently moving around freely in Europe. The minister said that Syria will participate in the International Conference on Syria Geneva II without preconditions and that the conference must result in resolutions on counter-terrorism. He said that if the world doesn't pressure Saudi Arabia regime, Turkey, Jordan and other countries to curb the flow of terrorists, then the crisis will persist. Stressing that al-Saud regime is directly responsible for international terrorism, including the 9-11 attacks in the U.S. and Chechnya and Afghanistan. Yet, the world glosses over the Saudi role simply because of its money. As Zabi said that most of the victims in Syria are army personnel and unarmed civilians, and that claims that the army targets civilians are baseless. Noting that the UN and Western countries failed to express any denouncement of the massacre committed by terrorists in Adra, where they decapitated people and put children in ovens. He also pointed out to the various attacks that targeted the facilities and staff of Syrian mass media, in addition to the censoring of Syrian channels on satellites, in order to maintain a unilateral and based viewpoint regarding what is happening and silence Syria's voice. But these attempts failed, and Syrian media managed to relay the truth to the world. For their part, members of the delegation said that most of the Australians have incorrect and selective viewpoints regarding what is happening in Syria as they are led by media outlets that impose their own opinion. Uh, we are here also to um, learn and to listen and to hear what uh, officials from the Syrian government have to say so that we can take that information back to Australia and share that with the Australian public. Uh, I belong to a group called Hands Off Syria in Sydney uh, and we work very hard to campaign uh, against the Western propaganda that's being waged against Syria. So for us in particular, um, this information will be extremely useful for us in our work back home to try and uh, fight that propaganda war. I'm still learning. I've only been here a few days. I've been studying Syria for a few years, but uh, I'm learning and trying to understand more of the, of the experience of the Syrian people from this aggression waged over such a long time. We, we have been facing a very hostile English language Western media and making a lot of use of our international networks through Latin America, through Russian television, through Syrian media. Secretary General of Hezbollah Party Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah has asserted that what was going on in Syria was a war of existence for Syria, Lebanon, Palestine and to the project of resistance in the region. In a speech delivered during a memorial ceremony for martyr commander Hassan al-Aqis, Nasrullah said that the queries now threaten all who oppose them, citing the massacres in Adra city where the queries killed people of all sects. He indicated that lies about Hezbollah existence in Syria are blown out of proportion, affirming that the party's involvement in to date is restricted and humble. According to his statements, lies about the numbers of Hezbollah's martyrs in Syria propagated by antagonistic media are part of the psychological warfare designed for undermining the morale of resistance. Nasrallah said, Patriarch John X, theology of Antioch and the entire East for Greek Orthodox Church, stressed that the Christians are a main component in Syria, as all the Syrian components are living like a family for a long time. In an interview with the Syrian TV, Patriarch John X, theology pointed out that the Syrian people 
with all their components and despite all difficulties have proved that the ideologies of abduction and killing will not pass to their mentality. His beatitude said, we will not fear or surrender to the schemes plotted to undermine Syria, clarifying that what the Syrian people and leadership are doing for confronting terrorism is an indication to our steadfastness as Muslims and Christians. Moscow on Saturday affirmed that the majority of the world countries have recognized that there is no substitute to the diplomatic political solution to the crisis in Syria, a matter to which Russia has concentrated since the beginning. In a statement released, the Russian Foreign Ministry said that the main practical outcome of the tripartite meeting among Russia, the United States and the UN held on Friday was asserting the date of Geneva II conference on Syria set on January the 22nd, while talks affirmed that the political process should help unify efforts of the Syrian to combat terrorism. The Russian Foreign Ministry said also that the Russian Foreign Ministry pointed out that all participants in the consultations have agreed on launching the inter-Syrian dialogue on the basis of Geneva communique issued on the 30th of June 2012 and on the basis that the mutual accord will be put an end to violence in Syria. It pointed out that the United Nations envoy to Syria, Akhdar Ibrahimi, has received with satisfaction the information on the formation of the Syrian government delegation to the Geneva II conference. The ministry added that the Russian delegation stressed during the meeting the importance of agreeing on the frame of foreign players invited to the conference, in addition to the importance of inviting the effective regional players to guarantee a constant settlement in Syria and to implement the conference's resolutions as Russia the United Nations see that Iran should be invited to the conference. In a related context, United Nations envoy to Syria al-Ahdar al-Ibrahimi on Saturday discussed with the Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif the latest developments regarding Geneva II conference on Syria. In a press conference he held yesterday, al-Ibrahimi said that Geneva II conference would be convened as scheduled with no preconditions. He pointed out that the conference would not be a separate event, rather a continuous process that might take a long time. Al-Ibrahimi added that the 26 countries would take part in Geneva II conference, but no decision has yet been taken regarding Iran's participation as the U.S. still rejects that. Al-Ibrahimi stated that among those countries that would take part in Geneva II conference are Egypt, Germany, Iraq, Italy, Japan, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Sultanate of Oman, Spain, Turkey, Sweden, the United Arab Emirates, the five permanent states of the United Nations Security Council, a representative of the European Union and Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Al-Ibrahimi pointed out that the Syrian government has formed its delegation that would take part in Geneva II conference, but the Syrian opposition has not settled this issue yet. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy. More news about the world of business and finance with Nani Man Qassam, but after the break.